Are you flying waypoint missions with your DJI Mini 2 or any other drone? And are you waypoint missions over obstacles? Then you should be aware of this. Hi, I'm Gerbert. I love to film with my drones. The aerial perspective really adds an extra dimension to a video. However, lately I crashed one of my drones. I crashed it into the top of a tree during a waypoint mission. With the mission itself was nothing wrong, because I had flown it multiple times prior to the crash in the same flight. But at some point during the flight, the drone started to fly the missions at a slightly lower level and it hit the top of a tree. In this video I want to share with you what happened exactly, why it happened and how to prevent it, so you can save yourself a potential drone crash. So, if you have a DJI Mini 2 for which waypoint flying recently became available, or any other drone, and you're planning to fly waypoint missions, Beware of what I'm going to share with you now. Here you see the mission. It takes 49 seconds for the drone to complete the mission one time. The first half of the mission is above a piece of forest. The crash happened right before waypoint 2. At this part the drone flies more or less 3 meters above the highest tree tops. Because in the specifications of my drone it says that the vertical accuracy during hover is half a meter, I was not concerned that the drone would fly at much lower altitudes and hit the top of a tree. Now you will see the footage of all the missions I flew prior to the crash in the same flight. This was at the altitude the drone was supposed to fly every mission. And here you see the drone already flying lower. Here the drone is flying that low that it's almost hitting the branches of the tree. However, the fishing system detects the branches in time and the drone performs an obstacle avoidance maneuver. But in this mission it crashes. So what was going on? Well in short, the air pressure at ground level lowered a little bit during the flight. The drone measures the air pressure when it takes off and it treats this as the air pressure at ground level during the rest of the flight. Then during the flight it derives its altitude above ground level from the difference in air pressure it feels at that moment and the air pressure it felt at takeoff. The larger this difference the larger the altitude above ground level. Now when the air pressure at ground level lowers the drone won't know this and it will assume a larger difference than is actually the case. And thus it will assume a larger altitude above ground level than is actually the case. With other words, it's flying at a lower altitude than it thinks it's flying. Let's illustrate this in a sketch. So here we have the flying spot, me with my drone. And at takeoff, the drone measures an air pressure of 1010.50 hectopascals. It stores this as the air pressure at ground level. When flying around, at some point the drone measures 1006.87 hectopascal. Now it can derive the altitude above the ground from the air pressure it measured at ground level and the air pressure it's measuring at this point. And it gives an altitude above the ground of 30 meters. In case you didn't know this, me neither. I looked it up on the internet. I copy pasted the formula into Excel and it quite some trial and erroring until it made sense. The formula is called the barometric formula. If you would plot it in a curve, it would look like this. At higher altitudes, the air pressure is lower and at lower altitudes, the air pressure is higher. If we would draw a vertical line from the horizontal pressure axis at 1006.87 hectopascals, it would intersect the curve at some point. If from this point we would draw a horizontal line, it would intersect the vertical altitude axis at 30 meters, just like we've calculated. We can also rework the formula to give us the air pressure at a certain altitude above ground level. We would have to fill in the air pressure at ground level and the altitude above the ground at which we want to know the air pressure. In this case, it would give us 1006.87 hectopascals. If we would draw a horizontal line in our curve at 30 meters altitude, it would intersect the curve at that point. If from that point we would draw a vertical line, it would intersect the air pressure axis 
at 1006.87 hectopascals. Again, just like we've calculated. If these mathematical formulas and graphs do not make any sense to you, don't worry. There is a quite clear graphical representation of what is going on. Imagine a huge vertical ruler with two scales. One scale indicates the altitude. And another scale for the corresponding air pressures at the different altitudes. Note that the air pressure scale is intersecting with ground level at 1010.50 hectopascal, the air pressure the drone measured at ground level. Now, if at some point the drone measures 1006.87 hectopascals, it would look up this value at the air pressure scale of our ruler. And it would read back the corresponding altitude above the ground from the altitude scale. In this case, 30 meters. During waypoint flying, it's the other way around. If at some point the drone has to fly at 30 meters above the ground, it looks up 30 meters at the altitude scale of our ruler. And then it reads back the corresponding air pressure from the air pressure scale of our ruler. In this case, 1006.87 hectopascals. This is the target air pressure the drone wants to feel. If at that point it feels a higher air pressure, it knows it has to climb a little bit in order to feel the target air pressure. And if it's feeling a lower air pressure, it knows it has to descend a little bit in order to feel the target air pressure. So let's now see what the actual air pressures were during the flight, so we can quantify the altitude error. The evening right after the crash, I looked up the air pressure during the day at Windfinder. Here you see the location of the flight, and this is the nearby weather station for which measurements were available. This is the air pressure graph of that day. The air pressure is indicated by the red line, and the red numbers on the right indicate the air pressure in hectopascals. I took off at 20 seconds and 10 minutes past 12. The crash was at 32 seconds and 18 minutes past 12. Now if we zoom in on this part of the curve, we see that the air pressure at takeoff was 1010.50 hectopascal. And the air pressure at crash was 1009.83 hectopascal. So let's now apply these air pressures at our flight. Here we have our spot with a beautiful tree of 22 meters height. Waypoint 2 is located right above this tree, at an altitude of 25 meters above ground level. There is me with my drone. I take off at 20 seconds and 10 minutes past 12. At that moment the air pressure at ground level is 1010.50 hectopascals. The drone stores this value as the air pressure at ground level. Then, when the drone is approaching waypoint 2, it needs to know which air pressure it should feel in order to arrive at waypoint 2 at the correct altitude. So it calculates this by filling in the air pressure it measured at ground level and the required altitude above ground level for waypoint 2, in this case 25 meters. And it knows it has to feel 1007.47 hectopascals air pressure at waypoint 2. If it's feeling less air pressure when it's approaching waypoint 2, it knows it has to descend a little bit in order to arrive at waypoint 2 at the correct altitude. If we would explain this the graphical way with our vertical ruler, the drone would look up the required altitude of 25 meters from the altitude scale and read back the corresponding air pressure value from the air pressure scale, in this case 1007.47 hectopascals. Again, if it's feeling less air pressure when it's approaching waypoint 2, it knows it has to descend a little bit in order to arrive at waypoint 2 at the correct altitude. So now we've flown our waypoint mission a couple of times and some minutes have passed. It has become 32 seconds and 18 minutes past 12 and the air pressure at ground level has lowered to 1009.83 hectopascals. But our drone doesn't know this and still thinks the air pressure at ground level is 1010.50 hectopascals. So, in our graphical explanation, the air pressure skill is still intersecting with ground level at 1010.50 hectopascals. The drone is approaching waypoint 2, and like before, it's looking up the value of 25 meters above ground level at the altitude scale and reading back the corresponding air pressure from the air pressure scale, in this case 1007.47 hectopascal. If it's feeling less air pressure when it's approaching waypoint 2, it knows it has to descend a little bit in order to arrive at the correct altitude at waypoint 2. 
However, because the air pressure at ground level lowered, the air pressure scale of our vertical ruler also has to be positioned a little bit lower. It has to be positioned such that the value of 1009.83 hectopascals intersects with ground level. Because the drone doesn't know this, it's still aiming for 1007.47 hectopascal, the old value. However, this value is now located within reach of the tree, resulting in a crash. Here you see the flight path extracted from the log file plotted in Google Earth. This part is me flying back manually to waypoint 1 for the next mission. And these lines are the flight paths during the first part of the missions. This is waypoint 1, waypoint 2, the obstacle avoidance maneuver during the second last flight and the error messages sent out during the crash. Here we are looking at flight paths from waypoint 1 in the direction of waypoint 2. Because the flight paths between waypoint 1 and waypoint 2 are overlapping, you can clearly see that the drone thought it was flying the consecutive missions at the same altitudes. But from the video footage, we can see this was clearly not the case, and it was flying lower and lower. Also the obstacle avoidance maneuver illustrates this. It is certainly not the case that the tree had grown 3 meters in 8 minutes. So now we know what happened. But how can you prevent this? Well, the first obvious thing to do is to apply more clearance between your drone and the highest obstacle in your waypoint mission. However, I usually don't want to do this. A lower clearance gives a stronger foreground background separation and makes your shot much more dynamic. So what else can you do? Well, a very simple thing is to keep the time between your drone taking off and flying over the highest obstacle in your waypoint mission short. So do the waypoint mission right after takeoff. If you have flown manually around for a while and then want to do your waypoint mission, it's a good idea to land and restart your drone first. If you're flying your waypoint mission a couple of times after each other, it's a good idea to, after every couple of missions, you land and restart your drone. Or every five minutes or every couple of missions. Just make sure the time between takeoff and your drone flying over the highest obstacle is not too long. Another pitfall when flying waypoint missions is that you come back on another moment or another day to fly the same mission and you take off from a different spot. If this spot has a different altitude than the previous spot, the drone will fly the whole mission with the same difference in altitude. So beware of this. Now let's take a look at the crash footage, because there's something very simple you can do to minimize damage. I did not do this, but that's why I show you, so you can do this in case you would crash. So here it crashed and lost several meters of altitude, but it managed to stabilize itself again. And here it's trying to pick up the mission where it left. What I could have done here is just touched one of the sticks and my little bird would have aborted its mission and just stayed in place hovering. However I didn't and the drone crashed and stabilized itself a couple of times again until it ended upside down on the ground. Here I found it a little while later. However, and I think this is quite a miracle, only the propellers were damaged and the rest was still working fine. So in the end I only had to replace the propellers and we happily lived ever after. Okay, I hope this video helps you to fly your waypoint mission safe. You can find a video for which I did my waypoint mission right here. Enjoy flying and filming. Bye!